Hey everyone, it's Owen here from OTEC, and today we're taking a look at four graphics cards from PowerColor, XFX, HIS, and AMD to find out which one's the best and worth spending on. These are all based on AMD's new Polaris architecture in the Polaris 10 flavor being the RX480. They have all the specs of the RX480 plus a factory overclock on some cards. They are based on the latest 4th generation GCN architecture and is built on the 14 nanometer FinFET process at Global Foundries. And they all support all the new AMD feature set. So let's take a look. The first card will be the AMD reference card sold by HIS. It has a black plastic shroud that has a textured finish on top and two Radeon logos. The blower nature of the cooler means that it will exhaust most of the heat out of the I.O. panel out of the case, so it'll be most suitable for crossfire or small form factor builds where thermal management is key. The cooler itself is a small aluminium heatsink that has a cover base and it also has a metal base plate that cools the VRM and memory chips on the side. It has a PCIe X16 3.0 connector like all modern graphics cards. And for the display outputs, it has three display ports and an HDMI port with one full slot dedicated to exhaust. Next, we have another card from HIS, but this time it's their top of the line custom card, the Roaring Turbo with the IceQ X2 cooler. It features a custom cooler with a lit up HIS logo on the shroud and a massive heatsink featuring four heat pipes and dual 90mm fans to blow down on a cooling assembly. It also has a base plate that takes care of cooling the memory while the VRMs are cooled by the main cooler itself. Obviously, this card is really large so take care when choosing a case for it or looking to upgrade your PC with this card. It also has an upgraded PCB with stronger VRMs and an 8-pin power connector compared to reference card 6-pin and also a dual BIOS setup. And for the I.O., it also is upgraded to have a DVI connector. Then we also have the XFX RX480 GTR which is exactly the same as the HIS but with a different XFX design backplate and an XFX design shroud with their LED XFX logo on it instead. The card features two 90mm fans and it also features the same heatsink as the HIS card which has four heat pipes and also has a base plate to cool the memory and the VRM is also cooled by the main heatsink just like the HIS because this is literally the same card but a few cosmetic changes. The PCB is even the same, with the 8-pin and upgraded VRM and also the dual BIOS. What's different though is that XFX made the dual 90mm fans removable for easy cleaning or replacements if they break. And they even sell LED lit fans of different colors. Although I don't understand why they didn't just make it have RGB LEDs in the first place. And lastly, the IO is the same as the HIS card too. And lastly, we have the Power Color RX480 Red Devil, which has a really long triple fan cooler that extends the whole card and a nice looking matte black backplate. It also has an upside down Devil logo on the shroud, which I would assume is on purpose to go along with the Devil team, as I wouldn't think that they're that stupid to do that by accident, anyways. And this card also has an 8-pin power connector and also a dual BIOS switch on top. While this seems like it's fit for extreme overclocking, the PCB itself is actually the worst of all RX 480s, even worse than the reference since it has weaker MOSFETs that are rated at a lower temperature. But as you can see later on, that this isn't as big of a deal as you might think. 
This is also the only card that I can take apart. So here I can show you the PCB, which has a 6 phase VRM for the core itself. And this is the VRM that I said wasn't as powerful as the reference or the XFX or HIS cards. This is really a reference PCB that has been stretched and also given weaker MOSFETs to reduce pricing probably. And also because of that, it could probably fit the reference RX480 water blocks from EK or other manufacturers if you want to. And the heatsink itself has 4 heat pipes just like the other cards. But it makes up in size by being long rather than very wide like the other cards. And it also has a triple fan setup compared to a dual fan setup. So it'll be interesting to see which one gets hotter and which one cools better compared to the other cards. The I.O. is the same as the other cards with 4 display ports and an HDMI port. I'll be testing the cards in my system with a 4790K overclocked to 4.5GHz on 16GB of memory powered by Seasonic P860 power supply inside a Fantex Evolve MATX with the side panel open. So here you can see that the power color and XFX cards overclock the highest, despite the fact that the power color has a weak PCB. This is because of the AC quality of the cards itself, which are pretty high compared to the other cards. And because of this, those two cards also run the hottest, since a higher ASIC means better electrical conductivity, and especially with the fact that the power color runs at a toasty 1.18 volt at stock, which means it runs the hottest of all the custom cards tested. While the reference card is just up there by itself at over 80 degrees all the time. For the performance benchmark, my thinking is that everyone already knows what the performance of an RX480 is like. So it's better to just use synthetic benchmarks to show how much of an improvement the custom cards give over the reference cards instead of running through the whole suite of games since the whole point of this video is just to compare RX 480s, not compare which graphics card model to buy. So there you have it, from my testing and evaluation, it seems like the only reason to buy the reference RX480 is if you can find it really cheap or if you need the blower cooler since performance and cooling is lacking compared to the other cards. Although even at stock, if you were surprised by the low score, it's because it was hitting the power limit so simply increasing it will help. It also isn't loud at stock. But while overclocked, the cooler is simply overwhelmed and it has to speed up to the maximum fan speed, which means it is really, really loud while overclocked. Speaking of overclocking, my method is to see how far the cards go with increased voltage applied but no more than 1.2 volts since above that power consumption just explodes and the clock speed improvements are marginal. Now, the power color card has been infamous lately for being revealed to have a weak VRM, but this is actually really exaggerated by people that don't know anything about this subject. But in actuality, it isn't a problem for most users since I could overclock it to as high as you pretty much can on air and it can handle it. And I even installed AIO coolers on my cards and overclocked them even further. And they're still fine, they're still working. The only time it is a problem is if you're doing extreme overclocking with liquid nitrogen, which I really doubt that many of you do, so again the VRM isn't really a big problem. Other than that, the power color card has a BC cooler that is quiet at stock but can keep up with an overclock easily, and it is also freely removable unlike the other cards. But I can't recommend the power color because the HIS and XFX cards which again are the same cards, 
performs really well while also having a strong PCB and the price are also pretty similar. The coolers also have quiet fans at stock speeds and if you have a low ASIC one at least because the high ASIC XFX was a bit louder due to the AMD algorithm for fan speeds which keeps increasing the fan speed until the temperature stops increasing. But between the two I would definitely take the XFX as it looks better in my opinion and it has the removable fans. So there you have it, from my testing, the RX 480 you should buy is the XFX RX 480 GTR Black Edition. I haven't tested more RX 480 cards though but I'll do so pretty soon, which I think I'll be testing the RX 480 Red Dragon card from PowerCon. But yeah, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed this video and please leave a like if you do and maybe ask me something in the comment section. And if you haven't already, subscribe to see more of my videos. Thanks for watching.